So, diving right into city Gmail. Um, in terms of the motivation behind it, I know I'm preaching uh, to the converted here, but uh, CGML does occupy a unique niche because it is at the city level, so it's not quite so focused just on individual buildings, such as uh, you know as IFC might be, and it's not uh, focused at the uh, sort of national global scale like you might in, in Google Earth. Um, so it's really the city level, and uh, it's key in terms of not just being a visualization tool, but actually modeling. Uh, the whole uh, urban environment, the urban landscape. And uh, so key there is having this uh, semantic correspondence between the objects themselves and what they mean, uh, both in terms of their attribution and in terms of uh, the geometry. And so uh, application areas include uh, disaster management, uh, uh, urban planning, navigation, transportation, facilities management, architecture, uh, and the noise, so you name it. There's a whole very wide range of, of uh, uh, uses for city GML, and you know, particularly in the areas of simulation analysis, having that rich data model behind it certainly helps. And I'll give a nod to Thomas Colby for uh, some, some of his materials in this uh, presentation. In terms of what uh, city GML is, so I, as I mentioned, it's exchange format modeling all parts of the virtual city, and uh, based on GML3, so it is XML-based. Now, that's, of course, that's a strength in terms of being an open standard, but as I'll mention later, that does produce, produce some limitations in terms of the size of data sets that you can reasonably work with, because it is not uh, spatially indexed. So in terms of the uh, data structure itself, we have these modules, buildings, roads, uh, city furniture, etc. And then there's a correspondence between the semantic object, in this case building, with the type of uh, geom geometry, such as a solid. And so here's a little more detailed diagram showing that geometry semantic uh, correspondence. Composite comp comp solid for building and solid for building. And the other key aspect of CDGML are the levels of detail. So this is really um, important, let's say, if you wanted to have a web a viewing client uh, that had increasing detail as you zoom in. That's really the, the, the idea here. So that you don't have to overload if you're doing, let's say, an application on the web uh, or just even on the desktop might have gigabytes of data, but you only want to have a very simple level of detail when you're zoomed out, and as you zoom in, it gets progressively more uh, detailed until LOD4, where you have actual interior detail, you can actually go inside the buildings. So thanks to uh, Christian Dunn from Pantera here for this slide. And uh, other characteristics of CGML, um, external references, so you can have references to things like textures, uh, that may be outside of the CDGML file. And uh, there are ways of extending CDGML. So you can have generic city objects and attributes for things that don't neatly fall into one of the predefined categories. Or uh, a, a more ambitious way of extending CDGML is with an ADE, so an application domain extension where you can define an XML schema document uh, that extends. Um, the functionality of what CGML can support. And an example of that is the noise ADE and also the IMGO uh, ADE done, uh, that uh, GeoNovum helped facilitate in, in the Netherlands in their effort to go from 2D to 3D uh, mapping. So here's a, just a quick snapshot of that uh, the thematic modules from an example data set. Carlsberg Institute of Tech. Okay, so in terms of our support for CDGML, uh, we support right up to 2.0, which I believe came out uh, as recently as uh, April of last year. And uh, there is a little uh, gotcha there that I noticed even looking for some sample data for today that if you do have any data created with 1.1, because 1.1 became 2.0, uh, that can cause, cause trouble. 
Uh, so you can use some stuff to go in there and change the name so it's an alteration. Uh, we do support ADEs, both in terms of reading and writing. Uh, so this is kind of unique for uh, FME's uh, GML support. For other GML profiles, you actually need, you don't typically have to use a templator to write to a, a uh, custom application schema. But in the case of CDGML, you just point at the uh, ADE SSD and you can write to that ADE. Um, and we support all the thematic modules, all the levels of detail, 0 to 4, uh, generic objects, and of course, uh, a range of other types of data, it's not not sufficient to add data. So we like to say that we've got the best uh, CDGML support on the planet. Uh, open to uh, anybody who wants to contend that. And that not just in terms of the uh, schema, but also in terms of our ability to populate that schema with the rich data sources that we can read. So here's a quick snapshot of a, a typical uh, CDGML document or data set. And so you can see it has the uh, building IDs and name and then the underlying uh, geometries within it. And uh, we'll see some other examples in a minute. So here's how the zoom levels work. Uh, so this is LOD uh, 2 and 1 is basically just sort of like a, a box or just the footprint extruded, uh, so no roof detail, and then level LOD zero uh, being uh, just the footprint itself without any height. So this is all one single uh, hierarchical geometry with different views of it. And of course, then you need a, a viewer that have, can that has an LOD slider in order to select different views of that. So here's. Just in terms of comparing the data models quickly, and we'll look at more examples in a minute. But uh, here's what SketchUp data looks like. So you can see here it only has one theme called building, and uh, it has a lot of rendering information. So SketchUp, the focus really is on presentation and visualization. So if we get back to the purpose of CDGML, it's not so good at um, uh, modeling or, or simulation. Uh, if you in terms of IFC, it's much more complex, so it's uh, building focused, and uh, so there's a lot of detail there um, in terms of all of the various components. Every door handle, uh, every window pane, it can be modeled. So uh, we're at a much deeper level. And uh, uh, I know we're not selling CDGML, but you could say that uh, in terms of the Goldilocks thing, uh, it's just right, not too hot, not too cold, so not too complex and not too simple in terms of the city scale. But really, the reason why I'm, I'm talking about this now is just to illustrate the, the differences in the underlying uh, geometry and attribute models and how that if you want to use one of those other two data sets, you have to map from those to this uh, CDGML data model uh, to successfully compose one. So you can see here we have six or seven different theme areas. Uh, buildings, uh, city, uh, floors, wall surfaces, windows. And then on the right, uh, we have both some attributions uh, for IDs, parent IDs. And then within the um, geometry itself, we've got things like the LOD level and the purpose of the geometry. And of course, CityGML supports textures. 